Welcome to DDL, where we discuss everyday topics like current events and or controversial points of view. This is No, I'm Void. First things first, shout out to our sponsor, Candle Time. Head over to the link in the description to purchase a candle today. Okay, we're on. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. So, Boyd is no longer with us, or with DDL. Um, so, I, I guess we should have talked about this before we started recording. Like, do you want to use your real name, or do you want to come up with a yeah, that's state? Fine. Okay. Yeah. So, go ahead and introduce yourself then. Hi, I'm uh, Justin Broby. I'm a residential appraiser. Uh, I am a Christian, and uh, I have a family living with me, so... I don't officially have my own family, but I do have a lot of the pitfalls of having a family without the benefits of marriage. So, yeah, fair. Well, that's a perfect intro. <laughs> give them a give them a taste of what you are or yeah. who you are. Yeah. So, um, this last week, the DNC. Mm-hmm. So, let's hear your thoughts on uh, on. Let's let let's go back though. Let's go back to okay. the RNC. Did you watch any sure. of the RNC? I watched a little bit. I definitely watched the Hulk Hogan intro. <laughs> okay, of Donald Trump. Yeah, that, I don't know if you got into that. Yeah, it was it was an entertaining. <laughs> As an '80s kid, man, that was that was a throwback. So yeah, yeah I really enjoyed that. Yeah, fair, fair. Yeah. So uh, DNC, how about that? Did you watch that? I didn't catch much of it. I saw one or two clips. Um, the only news that I did see, they did have. Uh, the abortion kind of set up out in front of the DNC. And I, I guess the estimates were anywhere between 20 to 30 abortions uh, happened during the, the DNC, DNC the week of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, kind of to be expected with the DNC. Very true. Yes. So I'm assuming with your Christian religion, that, that background, that that's probably a very important topic for you yeah yeah i mean the the pro-choice pro-life thing you know i've i've always been big on making sure that we protect the most innocent among us and i think that includes children inside and outside of the womb um and look we need to protect mothers too and i think the thing that often doesn't get talked about is the role of men and how a lot of times the reasons that women do get abortions it's because there aren't faithful men out there. Mm-hmm. There aren't men who stand by their woman who say, you know what, no matter what happens, I will be the father and I'll be there mm-hmm. to support you to help raise the child. And, and unfortunately, it puts women in some vulnerable, vulnerable positions to make choices that they shouldn't have to make. I, I, I kind of want to put a pin on that one. Yeah. And we'll, we're actually going to let's have a longer conversation on, for Friday's episode on, sure. on that one, because it's a it's a very important topic that uh, Void and I kind of avoided. We, mm-hmm. we kind of gave a little bit, but we avoided it. Mm-hmm. Might be an interesting conversation to have because because sure. as I grew up, my my uh, <clears throat> my take on it actually changed quite a bit. OK, so it'd be really interesting to see if you had maybe had gone through the same evolution. Sure. So. Um, okay, getting back on the, the politics of yes, the day. Yes, the politics, <laughs> yes. Uh, so the DNC did happen last week. I did not catch any of it. Um, I There was a, one speaker I did want to, Carter's son, mm-hmm. um, Jimmy Carter's son or grandson, um, was going to do some speaking there. I kind of wanted to check him out. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, he might be a potential future politician on the DNC or the Democrat side, but who knows. Interesting, yeah. Um, unfortunately I was just, I was swamped with work this week. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was literally working until I got dinner made for the kids Yeah, and then, yeah, you know, um, well, I, I have a feeling a lot of the democratic national convention, and it's, it's a lot of the same stuff. It's, we hate Trump. He's terrible. You know, yeah. they, they, they don't really run on their policies. It's just more of a hatred of one guy. They, they like to invoke emotion. They, they would rather yes. have people feel a certain way yes. versus actually standing on what they can accomplish. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that seems to be the Democratic Party of the day, today's day and age. Yeah, and it's, it's brilliant. I mean, I was probably more of a liberal for a good chunk of, of my life as well because I fell for the rhetoric and the emotion and how mm-hmm. they played up on that. And it's... If you're not paying attention, you can fall into it yep. quite, quite easily. So, yep. so uh, what I do think is interesting is the DNC was kind of pointless this year because usually the DNC and the RNC, they're all all the delegates get together and say, "This is who our nomination is going to be." Right. And this year it was 
well, Kamala already locked it up, and they're just doing it on ceremony. It's like, yeah. well, what do you do? Yeah, whether you like it or not, here, here's what you get. So, yeah. yeah. Well, it, the other thing that I think is interesting is the Democrats are always going on about how uh, Trump is a threat to democracy. Yes. And what they did with the DNC or what they did with uh, getting Kamala Harris as the nomination, mm-hmm. nominee, they basically said, to hell with them, democracy. Your vote doesn't matter. The guy that you right. voted for doesn't even count. We're just going to go ahead and pick whoever we want anyway. Yeah, it's it's unprecedented. I've I've never seen anything like it. It's I I don't understand how more Democrats aren't mad. Maybe maybe it's just because they think, hey, she's at least younger. She's at least more attractive. I I have no idea because as far as Joe Biden goes, I didn't. Out of my liberal friends, I didn't have a lot of people who were very vocal in their support for Joe Biden. No, but. I do have a lot of friends who popped up all of a sudden when Kamala was the presumptive nominee. They're, they're like, oh, we're all about Kamala. And I'm like, I, I haven't heard you say one thing about Joe Biden. So <laughs> maybe that was it. They were just trying to get some energy in the party. I don't know. Uh, well, very well. Well, I mean, if you can't stay in trial, you shouldn't be running for president. Right. <laughs> so uh, that's just kind of my take on that one. Yeah. So I think they did the right thing by removing Joe Biden. The, the bad part about it is they... It, this is just a theory of mine is I think they kept Joe Biden in there and and, mm-hmm. prov- and let him get as far along as he did because RFK dropped out. Right. Um, and with him being the running for the second term, it basically prevented RFK from even making a, a run for the Democrat spot. Right. Which allowed the establishment to put in whoever they wanted, whereas RFK is a little bit more of an outside of an establishment. Right. Much like what they did with Bernie Sanders, you know? Oh yeah. You know, I don't understand how a lot of the Bernie bros did not end up voting for Trump. Right. Like that made no sense to me. It's like Trump and Bernie had a lot of similar policies. Mm -hmm. And I remember in that election, I voted Gary Johnson. (laughs) I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Um, but, uh, I remember during that election, I'm just like, if I were to vote for anyone, I was actually going to, I, I had Bernie picked over Trump as well. It, just because Bernie's policies made way more sense to me than Trump's did. Right. Um, and then they did the, I mean, they did what, but then Ber- Bernie kind of, you know, did a 180 and became part of the establishment. He's just a shill for him now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I remember when Trump initially ran, I was like, there's no way this guy's trying to fleece. Like, I, I saw my parents go for it and I was like, he's always been a Democrat, you know, he's always been. Well, he's a New York Democrat, though. Right. Like, like right. circa 80s. Right. You know, which is the modern day Republican. It really is. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense that he would be running on the Republican tip. But what I think is hilarious is he's not even very conservative. Like, if you actually look at his policies and stuff right. like that, he's actually very moderate. Yeah. Um, so, and, and he even, he even announced as much because after the RNC, he had this special, uh, address just to basically more of a Christian audience. And when he did that, he basically, he kind of said, Hey, abortion's a losing issue. If you want me to just ban it outright, he said, that's probably never going to happen from a federal standpoint. But as far as Republicans, we believe in states' rights. Mm -hmm. And so we'll stand on your state's ability to choose on that. And so, like you were saying. Well, I mean, we'll get more into that, but that kind of ties into the whole Roe v. Wade getting overturned and stuff like that. So, I mean, we'll we'll save that for Friday, I think, because I got a lot of take on that because I was, believe it or not, I was happy for a reason that made no sense to most people. Okay. So Interesting. Well, and and just, just as a teaser, too, I used to be... Uh, very much pro-choice. So, oh, oh, so you probably are very similar in my in the evolution. Okay. Me. Okay. All right. Because so, I was very pro-choice as well. Okay. So yeah, yeah we'll put a pin yeah, in that yeah, one. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I like how we just keep coming back to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, DNC. Um, if you guys suffered through it, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, like I said, I was going to catch a couple of it, and I just just too swamped this week. Well, I did hear the clip of Oprah say that there is a white way to worship and a wrong way to love. She it was a it was a she meant to say the right way to worship, but I was just man, I I was just a little disappointed <laughs> in Oprah for being racist there for a moment. So. <laughs> a little slip of the tongue. We'll, we'll forgive her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh gosh, I'm sure I'm sure she cares from her ivory multi billion dollar tower. You know. You know. Yeah. <laughs> The funny thing is, is isn't Oprah and Trump like really good friends? Uh, or they used before to before this, yes, they, they used, used to be. be yeah. yeah, like like best friends, <laughs> right? And now she has to say, "Oh, I hate it." Yeah, basically, if if you are, 
you know, uh, an actor, anywhere, anybody who's a mover and shaker in Hollywood, now you have to be anti-Trump. Well, know? yeah, that's because if you're not, you're not going to get any new gigs. Right. Which is stupid. Right. But all these people loved and praised and worshipped him. You know, he was in rap songs. Mm-hmm. He was he was the standard for like, hey, this is success. And everybody everybody universally praised him until he, he decided to become a presidential nominee. And then all of a sudden, it was out the door. I think it was because he chose the wrong party. Right. According to them. According to them, they <laughs> yeah. chose the wrong party. But yeah. they're, they're, they're the party of tolerance, don't right. you know? <laughs> well, I, from what I understand, he actually was trying to get in as part of the Democratic And uh, they were trying to keep convention. him out. Yeah, yeah and they, they didn't want anything to do with him. And so. Well, that's because he's, his, his thought processes no longer match up with the progressive Democrats. Right. So he would never make it. Yeah. Um, so let's switch over to screen share and get over to the breakdown of the DNC. Kamala Harris and Adam Kingsinger. It, that's the that's the VP guy, right? Uh no, that I don't know who that is. Uh oh, it's wait. Walls who's the That's vice right, Tim, Tim Walls. Yes. Yeah, 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 from Minnesota. Yes. So, I don't know who Adam Kingsinger is. Yeah. So, Vice President Kamala Harris called on Americans to join her to chart a new way forward as she accepted the Democratic nomination on Thursday. Arguing her personal story and prosecutorial background made her uniquely qualified to protect their interests and beat Republican Donald Trump. Interesting. Yeah. So speaking of her prosecutorial background, Mm -hmm. did you know that when she was the uh, attorney general of California, she was actually keeping prisoners in prison longer in order to get cheap labor to fight the wildfires going on in California? Oh, I didn't know that was the reason. I, I had heard that she uh, had suspended, like, had kept a lot of their sentences yep. longer, but yep. I didn't know that was the actual reason. Yeah, she she wanted serfs, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah, she wanted serfs in order to serve the government. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, the thing, she just seems like such a disingenuous person. Oh, she is. The, the thing that got me was, was the... Oh, when I was in college, I used to smoke weed and listen to Biggie and Tupac. Meanwhile, you look and she graduated from college before either one of them had an album. And so I, you know, it's it's stuff like that. Is, no, she's pandering. She's, yes. That's yeah, all it is. She's yeah, pandering. And yeah. she's like, oh, most people are not going to look into the know that that's not true. Right. Um, so, I mean, but that's kind of the playbook for the Democrats is lie about the things to make yourself look more appealing. Yes. So yeah, to yeah. me that was as as cringeworthy of a moment as as Hillary Clinton's hot sauce uh, moment. If you saw her go on the, I don't remember that. One. Oh my goodness, she was on the the uh, I can't remember the name <coughs> of it, but Charlemagne the God, basically okay. the the basically the hip hop show that like is the platform for the Democrats on the East Coast. They were like, hey. Uh, what do you have in your purse? And she pulls out a bottle of hot sauce and she goes, hot sauce. And from that moment mm. forward, every like all black people were just like, uh, yeah, I'm not buying that one. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. oh. No, I didn't know that. That's hilarious yes. though. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. So back to this. Uh, taking the stage to a thunderous standing ovation at the DNC in Chicago, Harris sought to introduce herself to the American public and outline her vision for leading the nation for the next four years. So our nation with this election has a has a precarious fleeting opportunity to move past the bitterness, cynicism, and divisive battles of the past, Harris said. A chance to chart a new way forward, not as m- members of any one party or faction, but as Americans. Didn't Joe Biden make that same pitch back in 2020? He did. He did. And then he did a really weird, red-lit, communist, oh, uh, communist type of half-hour, not a State of the Union, just a random address he decided to do where he said anybody who's a MAGA Republican is an extremist and they must be stopped. Not realizing that, well, if you voted for Donald Trump in 2020, you are now considered a MAGA extremist, which is 74 million people in the country. So he thinks 74 million people are extremists, and yet look how peaceful we are as a nation. Well, well, that's not necessarily true. <laughs> I think if you look at, I, I think if you look, break it down along party lines, right. uh, Republicans are fairly peaceful. Um, right. 
your most violent extremists typically come from the left. That's more what I meant is the people who actually own the guns. Uh-huh. They they didn't respond in kind. Be, if if it was an armed insurrection of 74 million people, you th- you think uh, maybe they they would be a little more scared of that than January 6th. So. Yeah. Well, speaking of January 6th, all that stuff that's coming out is basically showing it was an inside job anyway. And then you have Pelosi's daughter even admitting that Nancy Pelosi refused the National Guard help because Donald Trump offered it. Interesting. I did not. I actually hadn't heard any of the recent updates. I was going off the kind of standing information where they had cameras and they showed people in black breaking in in the background. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I obviously from my perspective, I was like, yeah, that seems real shady but. No, so, so don't get me wrong like there was some violence that happened from the right on yes and, and those people should 100 percent get prosecuted yes um i i think the issue that i have is the double obvious double standard where mm-hmm. antifa can go in and burn down minneapolis right st paul you know all that over blm riots yes and no, no one ever gets charged with any of that stuff i mean right you remember when down when they um it was during the blm riots. so i can't remember the specific date now 529 maybe i don't know where they uh where they broke in and they actually forced donald trump down into the bunker and then they burnt that church oh that's right yeah right that was more of an insurrection than january 6 was but if if you remember because i remember i watched the news and the the graphic along the bottom said fiery but mostly peaceful <laughs> protests so that's gonna stay with yeah. anyone who lived through that time is gonna remember that as long as they were actually like paying attention right fiery but mostly peaceful yeah it's like like oh you know it was a nice big mushroom cloud but it was mostly calm right and well and there were aggressors like you said in january 6 to be fair but most of what i saw looked like a non-guided tour of the capitol building yeah it was I, oh, let's stay inside the red ropes. You know, it was, yeah. that's not what chaos or insurrection looks like. No. But there, but I did see videos of people pushing against the police when it yep. first started. So. Yeah. There was one side of the building that was actually more violent than the others. Right. But everyone's getting lumped into that. Right. And it, and it's like, no, 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 you can't just lump everyone together. That's not how this, that's not how our legal system supposed to work. Right. You know, so. Yeah. Um, so, where was I? Oh, Harris addressed in Chicago caps a whirlwind eight weeks in American politics and manifest the stunning reversal of Democratic fortunes just 75 days until Election Day. Party leaders who had publicly despaired over President Joe Biden's candidacy after his disastrous debate against. Did you watch that? I, I'm sorry. I couldn't even finish that. It's, we got to we got to go back to that. I only saw the one clip where Joe Biden trails off and Donald Trump says, do you know? I don't know what he said. I don't even think he knows what he said. <laughs> yeah. But I did see, I don't, I'm not sure if you caught on the comedy side, uh, right after that debate, uh, there's uh, a comedian, Tony Hinchcliffe. He has a, a show called Kill Tony. Okay. He had Shane Gillis, who got fired from from SNL. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He played Trump, and then Adam Ray played uh, Joe Biden. Okay. And they, this was three days after that they filmed it and recorded it. It's one of the most watched episodes of kill Tony ever. And it's just hilarious because they nailed the impressions of Trump and Biden. Uh, (laughs) And it was a very lighthearted because the guy who played Biden, the way he played him was just like, I I, 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 I don't know. And he just, he would trail off and it's like, Oh, that's a perfect Biden. Yeah. Yeah. God. I remember watching, I watched that entire debate. Um, I was actually watching Tim cast. They were, Mm -hmm. they were hosting and doing commentary on it. And I watched it on there. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> so there was a few things I was looking forward to going into that debate. I was yeah. looking for Trump to see if Trump actually kind of mellowed out a little right. bit, which he did. Yeah. I was very impressed. Like if you would have done that in 2020, dude, you would have won. Right. Um, and then I was trying to see if Biden could put a coherent thought together. And unfortunately he didn't. It was rough. <laughs> it it was, was rough. It was. And then his voice was all hoarse. What? I couldn't barely speak. Yeah. You know, it was just, it started off bad yeah. and it just went downhill fast. Well, and it wasn't until then that the media finally said, okay, we're going to turn on this guy. And and they did it all in one fell swoop. That's oh, when yeah. they had the, yep. the unedited interview with Joe Biden. Yep. And it was one of those, Hey, where's this coming from? Are you guys trying to expose him? Meanwhile, since 2019, they're, they're like, no, he's perfect they, they, sanity, perfect yeah. mental health, perfect clarity. There's nothing wrong with him. Yeah. And, but, and how people yeah. still watch legacy media 
is boggles my mind. Right. Like, can you not see the apparent lies and the cover ups that they're doing yeah. in order to push their personal agendas onto you? Well, yeah. And I've, I talked with a couple of people uh, today who were early twenties and I, we, we kind of got on some of the similar topics, but their perspective wasn't legacy media. Wasn't the coverage of the DNC. <laughs> it was, Hey, did you see Trump was on Aiden Ross's podcast? Mm-hmm. Hey, did you see Trump was on Logan Paul? Hey, did you see Trump was on uh, Theo Vaughn most recently? Yeah. Where, where they talked about cocaine use? Mm-hmm. I don't. Uh, I, I I remember hearing about it. Yeah. I didn't watch it. It's it's a phenomenal clip if you if you do have time to catch it. Theo Vaughn is sitting with Donald Trump talking about cocaine use and Donald Trump almost unfazed by it. And and I think those are the things that are going to make him very relatable to this younger generation. Yeah. That I th- I think. Well, I think the Democrats still believe legacy media is the way forward. Honestly, I don't know anybody who's under the age of 25 who watches traditional t- television. No, no, it's all it's all older people yeah. that are doing that. Everyone younger is now on podcasts. Yeah. They're that's where they're consuming most of their news and in all honesty, they should be. Yeah. But it also depends on the podcast they're watching, right? Right. The young, that's true. Cuz the young Turks, uh, you sure. know, for the longest time, every, I I would check in on them and I'm just like you guys are weird like yeah like the how you spin it to fit your narrative just doesn't make like yeah it's just so bad yeah i, I actually saw anna kasparian actually stood up for trump i can't remember what the context was but she basically said at least trump caters to his base if the democrats did a better job of that mm-hmm. they would be leading right now and she she basically congratulated trump and said he does a great job of of catering to those people and chank was really upset with her he, he he's yeah. he's been getting upset with her a lot lately yeah but i do i'm not a fan of the young turks but annika i can't say her last name kasparian, kasparian. Yeah. she um there's been a few moments with her that i'm i'm just like slow clap yes like wow like that was based as hell yeah oh she's she's gonna come around it seems she, like it. Yeah, she's going to be uh, whoever the nominee is in twenty, not twenty twenty, uh, twenty twenty eight, but uh, maybe twenty thirty two. She'll come around by then. She'll be you, like the. Do you think she'll go Republican? I, I she'll at least go independent. Okay, I think I think a lot of uh, moderate Democrats are shifting towards the independent realm. Yeah, um, or libertarian even. Right. Well, I, so this, speaking the, of which, yeah. if you don't mind, yeah. Would you mind sharing your political affiliation? Like, who, who, are, what, what are your political beliefs? Who are you more aligned with? Republicans, libertarians, independents, moderates? That's actually a great Democrats. question. I've, I've historically voted, I think, everything but Democrat. I voted for George W. Bush in twenty two in two thousand. God, he was an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> I hated that. But guy. <laughs> I, I was, I was, I had just turned eighteen. I was, I was ready to vote Republican and. And uh, because I was told that's what you do. And then my brother got me into the libertarian candidate, Harry Brown, in 2004. So I did a libertarian vote in 2004. Um, Political affiliation, I would call myself more of an independent. I do align quite quite a bit with most Republican views. And I don't really have any problems with libertarians. (laughs) Um, It's just it kind of turns into if you give everybody personal freedom, well, then at what point does that have to end? And yeah. there has to be some way to govern it. I, I, I lean a lot more towards most libertarian viewpoints, mm-hmm. yeah. um, but I do like a lot of what the Republican Party does stand for. But realistically, for me, the, the biggest issue is the one that we brought up earlier as mm-hmm. far as as far as pro-life, pro-choice. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of things that go into the way that I vote and the way that I think. And it, you know, what's economically best for everybody. Yep. There's so many factors. I, I'm not going to lie. The only thing that really is factoring into my brain in 2024 mm-hmm. is economic situation. Yeah. If we don't get the Democrats out, we are screwed. Yes. So, yes. I mean, as much as I don't want to vote for Trump, and the nice thing is living in Idaho, I yeah. don't have to vote for Trump. Right, right. We're, <laughs> right? we're about 85%, even with Boise. We're still 85% as a state yep. red. So, yeah. yeah. But if you live somewhere like like when I lived in, in Colorado, man, that's that's still, even though it, it is blue, 
it is still a, a hotly contested state. Mm-hmm. And if the rural areas actually would have showed out and, and yep. voted more, I, I don't know. I, I think there would have been a better chance. But yeah, yeah. here in Idaho, it, it really doesn't matter. No. So um, my personal thought, and just so everyone is aware, yeah. I'm doing a write-in for Vivek Ramaswamy just because I like that guy. I wish Trump would have picked him as his VP. It would have been I really awesome. do. I really do. Because I, like, I don't like his VP choice. What's his? No, I, J.D. He, Vance. Yeah, J.D. Vance. He's not a bad character. Can't, but he was a never Trumper. Yeah, um, he is a little bit more extreme than I would like. Mm-hmm. I, it doesn't seem to fit the Trump um, narrative. Right. He's he's kind of a damp towel when he gets on the microphone in comparison to to Donald Trump. <clears throat> yeah, like he's okay, but. Honestly, I, I think there were probably 10 other candidates that were better. My first choice would have been Vivek. Yeah, yeah he was my first choice. And, the, yeah. and, and I'll, 100% I'll explain the reason why. Trump's old. Yes. He's old as hell. Yes. There's a high probability that he's not going to make it through four years. Yeah. Well, so, especially with people taking shots at him. But. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fair. Fair. Um, so my thought is, is the VP candidate or the, his VP pick should have mm-hmm. been someone that matched his energy right. and would have carried his movement forward. Yes. And the best candidate for it would have been Vivek Ramaswamy. I, I have to tell you, when he first came out, I didn't like him. I thought he was a swindler. I thought I was I thought he was a grifter. I was just like, nah, not for me. But when I saw him on the pre debates for the RNC, calling people out, taking them to task for what they did and what their policies were. I was like, this guy came to play like, yeah. and that, that energy that, that I don't care what you think. I'm going to call mm-hmm. you out for what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the Nikki Haley moment oh, where God. she wanted to go to war with two different countries. He's like, show me on the map where they are. Tell me what their capital city is. And she just went blank. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then when they got back to her, yes. then she had an answer. Someone whispered it in her ear. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, so actually what got me out uh, Tim cast again, Tim cast a shout mm-hmm. out to them. I like those guys. Um, <clears throat> they were, they had Vivek Ramaswamy on. Yeah. And he legit did not back down from any question they threw at him. Yeah. So I started checking them out on other podcasts. There were, he would go on podcasts and there was nothing off topic for him. Right. And I'm just like, that is what I want. I yes. want someone who is genuine. I can care less if I agree with you. I want to know what you actually think. Yes. And surprisingly enough, a lot of what he said aligned with what I liked. And and very much like like you said, he's not shying away from anything. And he's not afraid to give a controversial, controversial answer and yep. just say, hey, here's what I think. If you don't like it, I don't care. Yeah. And I respect that. As, yeah. as a fellow... As a fellow person who kind of lets my opinions be known to people mm-hmm. and let the cards fall where they may, it's it's refreshing in the game of politics where everything's couched in. Right. Well, what you have to understand is this, and what I'm not trying to say is this, and please don't be offended when, when I say this. No, Vivek, he's just like, here's the deal. I don't care if you like it or not. Yeah. You're going to get the truth. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I'm switching back off the – because ain't – I mean – if you're watching this, you're probably not really caring what the DNC had to say. So um, we already know Kamal is going to be or is the nominee. Yes. Nominee. Trump's the nominee. Yes. Um, current polling shows that Trump is going to win this handedly, especially yeah. after the assassination attempt. Yeah. Well, th- there was about a week that there was like betting shares and there was different things that were saying Kamal has actually taken a lead on Trump. And as soon as the DNC started... It flipped right back over. Yeah. And it was it was interesting. I'm like, and she didn't even talk to the last night. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, what happened yeah. in between those? I Well, what happened was those those polls, I think, were inflated. And I'm okay. not going to say they were fake outright, but I think they were inflated because, like I said, my, my friends on Facebook who were not talking about Biden mm-hmm. were talking about Kamala. And they, they think Facebook likes equals showing up the polls and i don't think that's no. the case well and the other thing to mention with polling is is the polling i was skews towards democrats yeah. so like i mean well, crap was it 20 2008 2010 12 14 16 18 20 and 22 all skewed heavily towards democrats and when the actual election happened all of them were way blown out of the water like yeah not even close yeah 
And of course, we all remember the night that Hillary Clinton got defeated. Oh yeah. I mean, she was she was 10, 12, 15 points ahead in some of those states and it's like, nope, that state's going red. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I was watching that night and again, I, at the time I didn't have much of a political affiliation. I was still trying to figure it out. I, I hadn't even come back to faith yet, but I was just so blown away by what was happening that night. I was like, wait, she was supposed to smoke him, and I'm just sitting there watching and just... Yeah. Well, legacy media, again, hyped her up to be like this, and I, and I truly believe that the American people could see how fake she was and just could see how much of a vicious woman she really yeah. was. Yeah. I mean... <clears throat> can't really say too much because I don't want to end up disappeared. Right. Or suicided. Right. Yes. Be very careful what you say about the Clintons. Yeah. I'm probably going to get dinged for that. For right. Even saying that. Even just saying the name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. If, if I'm not back next week, I love my life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, God. You got to make sure that's known. Yes. <laughs> oh, but yeah, no. It, I remember I was, I was with... I was actually with my boss. We were out on the lake, his uh, lake house, and we were drinking, watching that night in 2016. Yeah. And I wasn't huge into politics or whatnot. I didn't even vote for Trump, but as soon right. as, as soon as I called it for Trump, I was screaming up and down. And so was he yeah. in, in the, <clears throat> um, we had uh, two of the girls that worked with us over as well. And, um, they were they were both just shaking their heads it's like oh and i'm just like dude like we dodged a bullet <laughs> yeah if if i would have known then what i what i know now i would have been much more celebratory but i was just blown away by the whole process and then i saw the meltdowns happening and i was like what what is going on yeah. and yeah. yeah and and that's as that whole thing started to go i was like y'all are a little too crazy over one guy and that was actually part of there was a lot of stuff, but that was actually part of what kind of brought me closer to, you know, that side, the, the Republican side, because up till that point, I was pretty liberal leaning. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. <clears throat> and I'm not going to lie. I'm not a Republican in any way, shape or form. Yeah. I don't like Trump personally. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to policies, his policies are leaps and bounds ahead of anything the Democrats have. Right. So, I mean, take it for what it's worth. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I just as as you said the number one thing you're concerned about is the economy mm -hmm. and there are so many people that i talk to being an appraiser going from house to house i see people in situations where they are struggling to pay the bills they they're they're refinancing their mortgage to try to make payments on their house they're they've had family members move in that they, mm -hmm. they've stopped eating out they've they've made a lot of adjustments and they're still filling the squeeze and when you see that's happening you know, when you're rich, fat, and happy, you, you can sit there and go, you know what? I need to stand on my morals. Mm -hmm. But when you can't eat, guess what? My morals aren't as important as making sure that my loved ones are taken care of. Yep. hundred <clears throat> percent. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I just remember in 2016, I mean, I remember how Trump um, was villainized in the media. Yeah. Um, I remember listening to Hillary and I just knew she was fake and I would have never mm -hmm. voted for her. Um. Granted, I wouldn't have voted for Trump either, and I didn't. Uh, but I just remember being so excited about it, and everyone, uh, like, as soon as, like, they found out, like, that I was happy at Trump, they are like, oh, you're a sexist. I'm like, no, I'm not. I care what. Like, right. you know, grab him by the, right. that, that was all played out. And I'm just like, right. that's that's not even what he said. He didn't say to go do that. Yeah. What he said is, is what men typically, locker room talk yes. about how, if you're at a certain stature, women will let you do things that yeah. most other men don't have access to. Throw themselves at you. Yeah. 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 So what he was saying was not what they were trying to make it out to be. Right. Yeah. And and I, again, not, not being politically affiliated for that election either. I just heard too many people come on too many talk shows and say, she's the most qualified candidate that there's ever been. And I'm like, mm, no, in what way? And, <laughs> and it was, it, I heard it from Louis CK. I heard it from comedians. I heard it from everybody. And it was just like, you guys were given this line to say yeah. and to repeat over yeah. and over to brainwash. And I, I was just like, I'm not falling for it. And what at that moment, I was happy that Trump won, but it's only because I just didn't like Hillary. Mm-hmm personally yeah. and she's not the type of person that i could see myself 
connecting with or like if Bernie Sanders would have won, I probably would have been fine with that. But I uh, just I would have been too. I yeah. I had no no loyalty, no tie to Hillary Clinton at nope. all. And I th- I think that that's where they you don't want it to all be about personality, mm-hmm. but that matters. It does matter. Like the, the thing I, I I think this is a good contrast between the parties right now is Trump has a personality of someone that I would never vote for, but he has the policies of someone that I would support. Whereas Kamala actually has a fairly decent personality. Mm -hmm. She's just inauthentic and, and she has no policy background. Well, and and that's just it for me. It goes back to the, who would I go to have a beer with test? I would love to hang out with Trump for an evening. Really? Just to sit and talk with him, just to hear him, just, just because the inflection, the tone, it's the greatest, it's the best, you know, it's, you know, everything's, and, and he is speaking in hyperbole. But oh, Kamala, yeah. but he doesn't strike me as somebody who's inauthentic. No. Whereas Kamala strikes me as somebody who's inauthentic. I would, I would be a dread to have a, have a drink with her. But again, with Trump, say what you want. You might not like him. You might not like his personality. But he is being him. Yeah, and that's what I respect. I would agree with you to the point where I would much rather have a beer with Trump. Sure. Uh, more or less just because I'd like to pick his mind on business. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just just like to pick his mind, see how he views things a little bit right. more in depth. Right. But that'd be about the only reason why. Because I'm pretty, I might get some laughs out of him. And For whatnot. sure. Like, I guarantee I'd probably laugh. I think he'd be good times. <laughs> one, one of the best things I think about Trump is, is the simple fact that he's a stand-up comedian. Yes. When he's off script, he is the best Trump. Him not trying to be funny is hilarious. Yes. The way he says, China. Like, <laughs> come on. The guy's, the guy's hilarious yes. without trying to be. Yeah. So, I mean, we, I could go all day about how I don't think he's a great person. Sure. I think he's got some really good qualities about him. Yeah. Um, but again, Idaho being Idaho. I'm Vivek Ramaswamy. You're getting written in at yeah. least once. <laughs> well, and, and with, with Trump, though, with the assassination attempt, I have seen a switch in his personality. I've seen a more toned down Trump where he's not as on the offensive. He's mm-hmm. not as attacking. And he does oddly seem more humble for the first time ever. And so and that's I, one of the qualities he, he has failed to have is humility. Yep. And it seems that brush with death really, I, really I think it started brought him there. down a notch. I think it started before there because yeah. I, you could see that humility coming forward in the debate with Joe Biden. Okay. Right. So when I said I was looking for him to see how he was toned down. Yeah one of the things that I picked up on was that he was a little bit more humble. He still would poke jabs at him. Right. In a funny way. Right. But he wasn't, he wasn't nearly as aggressive. He let, right. he let Biden step on his own stuff. And, and I think that was, that was the thing. You got to give him enough room to kind of hang himself. But uh, it, it, that was with Hillary. He had to be more aggressive with her. Oh yeah. 100%. Like the, the, I'd, I'd 100%. have you locked up. Oh my goodness. Again, I wasn't even in the political sphere at the time, but I saw that and I was like, oh man, he got her. Yeah. 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 No, I agree with you. Yeah. But, so. it, it, and, and when you look at it, the interesting thing to me was how bad Biden's gotten because for me, it was evident Biden has been in decline since the 2019 nomination. And, and oh, yeah. I, I, but it's, it's really strange because I, I went back and watched a 2019 clip of Joe Biden he actually sounds coherent yes. in comparison to Did nowadays. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, wow, in 2019, 2019, I thought he was incoherent. And But when you go back now, it's like, yeah. no, that that's clear, crisp Joe Biden right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree with you 100%. All right. We're running up on 40 minutes. <clears throat> um, we should probably go ahead and end this. And then uh, tune in on Wednesday. The topic is going to be on um, what do men look for in marriage. Okay. You know, and so real quick, little teaser for this. Yeah. Is there a difference between what men look for in dating versus in what men look for in marriage? Is there? Is there? Yes. Should there be? Hold on. Let's leave it. That's the teaser. (laughs) All right. (sighs) You want to say goodbye? Bye. Bye. (laughs) Thank you for watching. Till next time. Peace. Peace.